Former President Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are locked in a dead heat as we approach the final full week before Election Day. New Maris polling shows Trump with a slight lead among likely voters in Arizona and North Carolina. The two candidates are tied in Georgia, but all three polls are within the margin of error, so it is still anyone's race. Yesterday, Trump campaigned in Georgia, and today, Harris does. She arrives in Atlanta today before heading to a rally with former President Obama and singer Bruce Springsteen. Trump's on the West Coast, appearing in Tempe, Arizona. He's also holding a rally in Las Vegas, featuring former Democratic Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Well, our reporters, Camilo Montoyo Galvez and Nidia Cavazos, are covering the two campaigns. I'm going to start with Camilo in Tempe, Arizona. So, Camilo, let's talk about how difficult it is for a Republican to win Nevada. That hasn't happened since George W. Bush in 2004. Is Trump really banking on immigration to turn out voters for him? Hi, Lana. That is completely right. Former President Donald Trump and his campaign are seeking to turn immigration and concerns about border security into a defining issue in this race for the White House. And the campaign certainly believes that this will pay dividends here in the Sun Belt in states like Arizona and Nevada, where they have sought to highlight concerns about the increasing number of migrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border under the Biden administration compared to other previous administrations. And they believe that this will help them make inroads with Latinos in these two states with large Hispanic communities. At virtually every rally that is hosted by Senator J.D. Vance and former President Donald Trump, Lana, they talk about their promise to carry out the largest deportation operation. And that receives a very warm welcome at these rallies. And according to polls, a majority of Americans now support this policy that would have been controversial, maybe even unthinkable just a few years ago, including Latinos. And so they believe that the public is behind them. They are highlighting these concerns about immigration. And they are also trying to tie the issue of immigration to other national crises, including the national housing crisis. Yesterday, I attended a rally by Senator Vance in Reno, Nevada, and while he focused much of it on the national housing shortage, he partially attributed that crisis to the crisis at the border by arguing that hundreds of thousands of migrants released from border custody, Lana, are now occupying homes and houses that, in his words, rightly belong to American citizens. So they believe that immigration could help them catapult them to the White House yet again, and they're banking on it, Lana. So, but fact check us on some of this, uh, Camilo, because we know that you are following all of this at a, at a more in-depth level than uh, the average person. How much of this is actually based in, in fact? Well, for example, J.D. Vance yesterday claimed that 25 million unauthorized immigrants have been brought into the country in recent years, and that is completely categorically false. There have been record levels of encounters, as we have discussed, Lana, at the border under the Biden administration, about 8 million encounters there with migrants, but about 4 million of those migrants have been released into the country, which is obviously a much smaller number than what J.D. Vance has touted on the campaign trail. The rest had been quickly expelled to Mexico or to their home countries under different policies and processes. So about 4 million immigrants have been allowed into the country after being processed at the border under this administration. And yes, there is a housing shortage in many communities, but it is too simple, Lana, to attribute it just to the influx of migrants coming across the border. But it is telling how much public opinion has changed, uh, even as some of the things that are being said out on the campaign trail don't hold water. Uh, let's talk, though, about the fallout that continues from Trump's former chief of staff, retired General John Kelly. He made remarks that he thought Trump, if he had another term, would govern as a dictator. He said that he heard the former president, his boss at the time, saying Hitler, quote, did some good things. Talk to us a little bit more about how that's all playing out on the campaign trail. Well, yes, after all, these are remarkable, stunning revelations by John Kelly, who not only served as Trump's chief of staff, Lana, as you know, but also his homeland security secretary. And he agreed with most of President Trump's immigration and border security policies. But he's saying now that basically former President Trump fits into the mold of a fascist. But former President Trump is saying that 
John Kelly is a lowlife who cannot be trusted in his words, and he has sought to discredit the former general and has sought to basically say that this is just political rhetoric before the election, that it is, you know, not a coincidence that it is coming out now days before the election. But Vice President Harris has sought to capitalize on this by trying to appeal to disaffected Republicans and moderate voters, hoping that they will turn out not in an affirmative show of support for her, Lana, but maybe as an anti-Trump vote based on these concerns that former President Trump may try to bend the government to his will and that he has some authoritarian tendencies. And so this is still a political fight that we have yet to see what the result will be, but we will find out soon enough on November 5th if this will pay dividends for the Harris campaign. All right, right around the corner. Camillo, thank you.